All right, today, today we're working with uh, graph laws and how to gas laws, not the graph laws, gas laws and how to actually graph these things. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Uh, this was demonstrated in class, but if you missed it here, uh, here you go. All right, so uh, when it comes to inserting a graph, uh, we're starting with Charles Law. Uh, Charles Law states that uh, we should have a directly proportional relationship. Uh, once we graph this. So let's take our data and go ahead and do that. Step one, uh, with your mouse you're going to select uh, A6 and you're going to scroll over to B10. All right, so we got that data selected there. From here we're going to come over here to our menu and look for insert chart. If you don't see it right here you might have some three dots right here and if you click there you should be able to see uh, a few more options when working with this program. When you click insert chart, uh, a chart's going to come up right away. Uh, however, this is not exactly what we want, not quite the data that we have here. So instead, we're going to come over here to our chart editor and we're going to go to chart column chart and we're going to change our type of chart to a scatter plot chart uh, as that's going to put our dots in place as we look at them. Now, Creating that chart was really, really simple and really, really easy to see. But the question that we have here is, does this show a directly proportionate relationship? And that can be hard to say. Now, you might have said, well, why don't we just use a line chart like this? And yeah, it creates a line. Uh, but the hard part about that is it's not exactly sure what's going on. Right? But what we can see is some, some important things. Right? It shows us that there's kind of this relationship here. Uh, as a lot of the points have a tendency to line up, especially right here. And that's a really big clue for us to say that, yeah, maybe this really is uh, directly proportionate. The problem is, is that scientific data is not always neat and exact like you would find in an algebra linear math problem as you're working with this. Instead, uh, we're going to go back to our scatter plot and uh, to show that linear relationship then, we're going to come over here to the Customize tab. And when we click on the Customize tab, we're going to scroll down to Series. And within a series, we're able to uh, find a relationship using what's called a trend line. And so if I click that box right there, Trend Line, uh, suddenly a line appears there and we're able to understand that this is the relationship that is there. Uh, the, the points are really, really close to that line and uh, in the end we really do actually have a linear relationship. Now if we plugged in more and more and more points, right, we're working with just five points right now, so if we plugged more and more and more we would see that all these points in here, like if we did 14 and negative 14, negative 13, negative 15. If we kept going like that, we'd see that this really looks like a really nice consistent line. The other thing we could see is if we were to zoom out and take this all the way to our lowest degree of temperature, which would be uh, zero degrees Kelvin or a negative 273 degrees Celsius. If we were to take it that way, then these points would look really, really straight as we look at that. All right. All right. So that's that's step number one. That's how you do one of those graphs. All right. Uh, for graph law number two, that's your opportunity to repeat what we just did together here uh, in this graph like that. All right. Moving on then, we move on to graph law number three. And we want to come away with something that looks kind of like this. So how do we do this? All right. It's really nice if we have these two sets of data, if we could really compare them right next to each other and it really makes it really nice to be able to compare the difference between air and hydrogen uh, as it's taking place in uh, a 30 millimeter syringe. Right? So how do we create a graph that has two lines on it instead of just one line on it? Right? Uh, to do that in uh, Google Sheets we have to use uh, a table that looks kind of like this and we're going to create a table together uh, right now. All right, let's create this table together. So I just chose a blank cell uh, to begin with, and I'm going to click Insert Chart, and we're going to have uh, this. No data comes up, but we got some different options here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure a scatter plot's going to come out of this, All right? And then I can start adding in 
um, my data. All right, so I'm going to go to add my X axis first, and I'm going to click this icon here, and I'm going to select uh, from F26 to F36, and go ahead and click OK. All right, and for some reason it moves it down here to the Y axis, which is not what I told it to do, but it did it anyway. So I'm going to do it one more time, and repeat those steps. All right, now we got it correct. All right. Uh, correct like that okay as we're working with that um, now at this point if you have two sets of numbers if you got this set of number and then another second second set of number instead of this joint set of numbers you have to come here to customize go to your horizontal axis and make sure this box is not checked if you check this box it separates it like this so we want to make sure that box is unchecked right we want to be treated like numbers all right, back here. Uh, now that we got uh, the right scale on the bottom, let's add our Y, all right? And that would be our series. Uh, so to do that, I'm gonna select volume of air and click OK, and that data comes up. And then I'm gonna do that one more time, and this time I'm gonna choose volume of hydrogen, and I can choose all of that, and we got that. Uh, but we got to get rid of this one now. Now that we have that, we can get rid of this temperature C. So let's remove this one. Go ahead. Man, the computer just really doesn't like me right now. All right, let's try it one more time. If you caught up with me, not yet. Okay, I got got it to remove, right? So I clicked here, clicked remove. If not, you can just you can just come up here to the data range and you're gonna see kind of some repeat data up here. And I deleted something again. Alright, let me fix that real quick. I'm missing my volume of air data. There. Alright. All set. Now, as much as this chart is really nice, it's not quite done yet because we got to come back here and add some labels. So we're going to go back to customize. We're going to go chart and axis titles. That's where we're going to start. And we can keep changing which axis we're working on uh, as we work with this. So we're going to go with chart title. So we're going to call this one um, temperature versus volume. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Right. Now we're going to come here to our horizontal title. And we're going to say temperature. We'll put that Celsius in there just to help us understand that. And then we're going to go to our vertical axis title and put volume in there. Make sure we get our label in there like that. All right, now we got a chart that's looking pretty nice. Um, Last thing we want to do is make sure we get our trend lines in there. So we go to series, check trend lines, and now we can start seeing how those straight lines really exist. And this one becomes a better example, right? Same data, same types of gases. Now we can really see that liter linear relationship much, much clearer than we could the first time because we have a wider range of, of temperatures and a larger span of data. Uh, so we can really see how it becomes linear. All right. Okay. Now that took way too long, right? But you can shrink it down, move it over to this section over here when you're done, and we can go on to Boyle's law. All right. All right. Now Boyle's law is just a little bit different, right? Boyle's law talks about the fact that it um, is inversely proportionate. So while Charles' law is directly proportionate, which means we're going to get straight lines. When we go with Boyle's law, we're looking for inverse proportions, right? So when it comes to creating a graph with this, uh, we're gonna actually take the exact same steps that we did the first time, right? Back way up here with our 10 milliliter syringe. And so we're gonna select the data that we want, come over here, insert chart, change our chart type to series, and as we look at this, we're going to already notice that our data 
kind of shows this really clear cut line. And if we were to turn it into a line graph, we're going to see, see how we got all these corners right here. Right? That's kind of a clue that says, oh, maybe this really isn't a line, uh, a straight line. The other thing we can look at is um, if we go back to scatter plot and customize it, right? We want to add that trend line anyway, but if I were to add a trend line and I click there, we can see that this line comes here, but we got all these points that are really far off uh, the mark there. And that's another sign that it's probably not uh, a direct proportion. So instead, we need to change our line type. So right now we're looking for a linear trend line, uh, which would be directly proportionate, but we know that Boyle's law is not, it's inversely proportionate. And to do that, we're going to change it to exponential, exponential. And now we got this nice curve coming in here, right? As we're going on with that, right? And, and that gives us a really nice Boyle's law uh, graph, right? So I can grab that move it over here and we have those steps right so you're going to do the same thing now but now we're going to compare it to a 60 milliliter syringe this is what you did in your activity so the first thing you're going to have to do is fill in your data here uh, with your books from 1 through 15 and then you're going to follow the steps we just took here over here with the 30 milliliter syringe and uh, you're going to create a graph and you can place that graph right here right as you build that and I'll we should be able to see Boyle's law at work with uh, the data that you create. Right? Uh, once you're done making this, you can go ahead and there's just a couple questions here to have you thinking about the different graphs and the relationships that you see there. All right, a little bit longer video than I wanted it to be. I had a little computer difficulties, but hopefully uh, you don't. If you do, make sure you're asking questions uh, at the beginning of class. Um, that's it for this video.